Okay, so basically what I'm doing here today is um, I'm going to be potting up some of the loofah seeds that I planted about a month ago. Uh, I've never grown these before. Apparently they grow in warm climates with long growing seasons. So, and that's what we don't have here. But I'm going to give it a try anyways. Um, so, these have been growing for about a month now, and I haven't had a chance to pot them up yet. Some of them are getting pretty big, and they need to be put in pots so they don't become pot-bound by the time I put them out into, um, into the garden. So that's what I'm doing now. Basically, I just want to put a little bit in the bottom here. Um, the lupa vines are actually really cool because they grow those lupa sponges that you um, that you see in um, all the bath stores and you use in the shower when you they like sponges basically. So I'm gonna see how well I can do at um, at growing those. Like I said, they have an ex they need an extended growing season, which we don't have here in Ontario. So. It'll be interesting to see how they turn out. That's basically one that I've done now. There's quite a few here to do, so I won't do them all for you, but just to show you the size and what they look like right now, and we'll follow them along throughout the year and see what they look like and how well they're coming along. collection of seeds here that I'm going to plant this summer that I'd like to show you. One of them is Black Eyed Susan and it's a really great plant because it's very easy to grow and it grows really well in our Ontario climate. The nice thing about them is they don't stop flowering all summer long and they're perennial so they're going to come back next year. Another one that I'm going to grow is a purple coneflower also known as Echinacea. This one is very much like the black-eyed Susan, it doesn't stop flowering all summer long. It's very easy to grow, and it's very hardy, and it's got beautiful purple flowers growing on the top. This one here, hollyhocks, I've never grown them before, but I've seen them in the garden, and they grow really tall, and they've got huge, beautiful blooms all the way up. And I'm going to plant them at the side of the house and see if I can come up, cover up some of that brick wall. I'm going to give a shot add um, some sunflowers. I've never grown them before either, but everybody else grows them and they seem to be pretty easy. And they're always colorful and cheerful, so we'll give those a try too. It's long and rectangular like a vegetable garden, and I'm just going to plant the flowers in rows. So I have lots and lots of the same plants so I can go out and pick flowers when I want to make arrangements. And one of the plants that I have chosen to go in the cut flower garden is called Helichrysum, it's an everlasting. It's actually better known as straw flower. It's very easy to grow as well. It's fast growing. They're very short plants, but the nice thing about them is they have bright, colorful flowers. And when you cut them and hang them upside down to dry, they keep their color and their shape and they last all winter long. Now that I've shown you the seeds that I'm going to grow this summer, I'm going to get to germinating some. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that right now. So what I'm using to, um, to propagate these seeds in is this really neat little thing that I bought from a company called Lee Valley, and it's a seed propagator. And the neat thing about it is it has a reservoir in the bottom for the water. This is the section here where it holds the dirt and um, your seeds grow in, and a little greenhouse thing on top. Now this one's nice because it's really skinny, and it can fit on windowsills in your house. They do make a larger model, but it doesn't fit on my windowsill, and I just don't have the room for it. But, um, yeah, no whatever. So the nice thing about this is, on the inside, you've got all these little cells where you can put your seeds. And um, when the seeds are done growing and they become large, the roots fill the cells, 
and what you do is you just lift them up and push them out from under. Now that I've finished planting all of my loofah seeds in their pots, I have a spare one here, and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with planting a new set of seeds. So the kit basically comes with a plastic top on it, like this, to create heat, and it's got the middle part here where you put your seeds and you fill up with dirt. You've got your reservoir here, that's full of water, and, um, and this part here, and how it self-waters itself is there's a little cotton mat, and it fits through the holes, like this. So what you do is you fill up the reservoir with water, and it just wicks the water up from the base underneath, and keeps your seedlings nice and moist so they don't dry out and possibly don't propagate which is a problem I have because I keep forgetting to water my seeds and they never grow. So this is a miracle for me because I am the worst with that stuff. So now I'm going to fill this up with some dirt and get my seeds started. So all you really have to do is just pour the dirt over the top and um, make sure all of the little holes are filled up Nice and tight, not too tight, but tight enough that it will be able to suck the water up from underneath to keep the seedlings moist. Now the one of the most important things, well depending on the seed that you put in here, is to keep it in the window and keep it warm. The, the heat will create some steam on the inside like you can see with this one, and that will make your seedlings grow. So now that I have it filled with dirt, I'm going to fill it with the seeds that I've chosen. I'm going to start my straw flower or everlasting flowers in here. They do need to be started before I put them out in the garden for the summer. So I want to get a head start. It's the second week in April now, so I should have enough time to put out little baby plants by the time it's warm enough. So now all you need to do is sprinkle the seeds into the holes and make sure that um, they get covered up once you're done. Just push the dirt around just a little bit to make sure that they're covered. And after all that's done, you grab your watering can and fill the reservoir. The nice thing about this is the reservoir has a little indicator on it to let you know if it's full or not. So you don't have to lift it up to check and see if the reservoir is full, you can just tell by the indicator on the side. So there you go. This is my favorite little windowsill greenhouse. I couldn't grow seedlings without it. If you'd like to order one for yourself, the link is at the bottom of the screen. This particular model here is about $19.95. And you can pick them up in Toronto or Ottawa, or you can just order them directly from the internet.